In this episode of Sailing Doodles, we explore the baths at Virgin Gorda. A catamaran has a collision with us. And we do some hiking at Salt Island. A year ago, I had a stroke and lost my career as a corporate pilot. So I sold everything I own and bought a boat that probably cost less than your car. I packed up my two dogs, talked a good friend into coming along, and we set off to sail around the world. Along the way, we've had some great adventures and met some amazing people. So come along with us on this journey and enjoy the ride. These videos are made possible by patrons like you. To find out how you can help, go to sailingdoodles.com. It was a short sail down Virgin Gorda to the baths at the south end of the island. The baths are a natural granite formation that forms all kinds of tidal pools, really nice arches and grottos. I'd like to say I got some really neat drone footage of the area, but that's not the case. Unfortunately, this is the time when my drone crashed. I was still able to get a few nice shots, but relatively quickly the drone started malfunctioning. After a lot of back and forth with the manufacturer, they said that the drone was indicating that it had a failure and that it was asking me to land the drone. I told them I was on the water, how am I possibly going to try to land the thing? They said because I did not land it, that they will not cover it under warranty, and I'm stuck with it. Even by accident though, I was still able to get some pretty neat shots of the granite formations there at the baths. So my advice to you would be not to buy a unique drone as I was not very happy with their customer service. Get yourself a nice DJI or a splash drone instead. We don't have the money to buy a new drone right now, so if you'd like to help us out, check out the show notes for a link. The moorings outside the baths are all free, but they do fill up pretty quickly. You have to tie up your dinghy on the outside of the swim area and then swim in. So if you're not a strong swimmer, bring something to float on. This is the entrance to the baths, so there are certain times when you have to be a little bit agile to get in. It really is neat walking through these massive structures filled with water. Safest way. Oh no! <laughs> Got it, don't worry. I'm so worried. 
At the end of the baths, there's another nice little relaxing swim area. better view too, I don't know. Long swim back to the dinghy, Megan's arms might have been a little tired, so she was having a few problems getting back into the dinghy. I've been doing so well. Hold on. Okay. Okay, one last try. Come on, arms. You've got it. You've got it in you. Grand! After the baths, we headed over to Trellis Bay on Beef Island to do a little reprovisioning. How you doing, Mav? As you can see here, Maverick likes to live dangerously. When the seas are calm and we're just motoring, the dogs like to stand on the bow. I think it's reminiscent of sticking their head out a car window. What are you boys looking at? The dogs are a hit pretty much everywhere we go. Although they are a little shy and nervous around people they don't know. Well, I'm excited because I get to do laundry. I gotta, <laughs> I'll fill this bag up, trust me. But the girls got to do their laundry last week with fresh water. Uh, but the laundromat closed before I could get mine done, so I ended up using a little bit of clothes and used salt water. Not ideal. So, fresh water! It's amazing how excited you get about little stuff like that. Like having clean clothes washed in fresh water. Uh. Although, before I could get ashore to do laundry, this happened. We were on a mooring in Trellis Bay when a cat that only had one engine working came through and clipped our mooring line and then hooked right into us. Their port side rudder and motor tangled in our mooring line and we were stuck together. 
Although there was no damage to our boat, our anchor took a nice little gouge out of their fiberglass. We ended up getting in the water to dive down on it and see exactly how bad we were tangled up. It seemed the easiest way to me to get out of the situation was to tie a line to their port stern cleat and hook the other end to the mooring ball and then we would slip right off the mooring ball and away from them. There was a lot of tension on our mooring line and it was stuck underneath their rudder so we couldn't let it slip off. We ended up having to cut it off actually. How you doing? What a day. Just yeah. sitting there making some, some Thai pasta, making some homemade sauce, and then BAM! <laughs> I, I, was, I was sitting there editing and all of a sudden I heard this, it sounded like we were grinding on the bottom or something. What is that? And then boom, we got hit. I thought, man, I thought we cut loose or something. It wasn't our fault. Somebody else just ran right into us. So, uh, Hey, we had to cut our line off to get it back, to get unstuck and move to another mooring, but whatever. Back to pasta. Yeah. All right, so there's a silver lining behind every collision. Uh, nice folks from England. Uh, they brought us our mooring line that we cut back and... A box of wine! <laughs> box wine! We were just mentioning how we have like zero alcohol left on this boat. And we wanted wine, and so... We wanted wine. You ask and you shall receive. Exactly. In so weird it's ways sometimes. It's worth a little bit of... And the pasta's done. Yeah, it's, it's worth a little bit of, you know, marina rash. It's all right. <laughs> I just scrubbed that side, too. Uh. All in all, it's nothing a nice glass of wine and a sunset like this can't fix. So from Beef Island and Trellis Bay, we headed down to Salt Island. Boys, come here. It was time to give the pups some exercise and there was a few good hiking trails there too. Salt Island is uninhabited and there's never been more than three people living on the island since 1980. But the remnants of their old buildings and such are still there. Salt Island gets its name from the salt ponds in the middle of the island, where as the water evaporates, the salt remains behind. I really was surprised by how dry and desert-like the island was. At the top, there sure were some pretty views. Ahead is Peter Island, and right behind that is Norman Island. And the distance there is St. John. And coming up on the right side is Tortola. And then far around the right side again is Virgin Gordon. Disgusting dog. What did you do? Get back. Part of the reason no one lives on Salt Island is because the salt ponds can stink a little bit, and Maverick found it. Get over here! Hey! Come here, Goose! Goose! Hey! 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 Don't drink that one! Come on! Come on! And I think Goose was headed that way too until I stopped him. It's definitely worth a few stinky dogs for views like this. Maverick, get back.
Megan wanted to check out the salt there at the salt pond. I kept waiting for her to break through the surface into that stinky mud, but unfortunately it never happened. The easiest way to clean up some stinky dogs and cool them off is have them take a swim in the ocean. It works for people too. Well, thanks for watching another episode of Sailing Doodles. Please click like and subscribe. And check us out next week as we hang out with Fun with the Fifers and continue our voyage around the BVIs. This video channel is made possible by donations from viewers and patrons like you. Please visit sailingdoodles.com to find out how you can help us keep making videos.